Afternoon Marsh from the foot of misty hills and bogs, bearing God's hatred, Grindel came, hoping to kill anyone he could trap on his trip to High Hera. He moves quickly through the cloudy night, up from the swampland, sliding silently toward the gold shining hall. Never before nor after that night had he found Hera defended so firmly, his reception so harsh. He journeyed, forever joyless, straight to the door, then snapped it open, tore its iron fasteners with a touch, and rushed angrily over the threshold. He strode quickly across the inlaid floor, snarling and fierce. His eyes gleamed in the darkness, burned with a gruesome light. Then he stopped, seeing the hall crowded with sleeping warriors, and his heart laughed. He relished the sight, intended to tear the life from those bodies by morning. The monster's mind was hot with the thought of food he would be feasting with his belly. With faith that night, intended Grindel to gnaw the broken bones of his last human supper. Human eyes were watching his evil steps, wanting to see his swift, hard paws. Grindel snatched at the first geek he came to, ripped him apart, cut his body with lips with powerful jaws, drank the blood from his veins, and bolted him down, hands and feet. Death and Grindel's great teeth came together, snapping life shut. Then he stepped to another steel body, clutched at Beowulf with his paws, grabbed a strong, wakeful sleeper, and instantly was seized himself. Claws bent back as Beowulf leaned up on one arm. The shepherd of evil, guardian of crime, knew at once that nowhere on earth had he met a man whose hands were harder. His mind was flooded with fear. Grindel's one thought was to run from Beowulf, flee back to his Martian hive. This was a different hero than the Holly of Innocence. The Higlax follower remembered his final boast and, standing erect, stopped the monster's flight. Fastened those claws in his fist till they cracked and clutched Grindel's throat closer. The infamous killer fought for his freedom, wanting no pleasure in the desiring nothing but escape. His claws had been caught, he was trapped. That trip to Harrow was a miserable journey for the riding monster. The hall rang high, its board swayed, and veins shook with terror down the aisles. The battle swept angrily and wild. Harrow trembled. Great bodies beating at its wall, beautiful wall, shaped and fastened to iron inside and out. Artfully worked, the building stood firm. Brent benches rattled, buzzes, gold covered doors, grinding its brindle and rain, battled the process. Brothgar's wise men had fashioned hair to stand forever. Only fire they had planned could shatter with what such skilled workers had put together. Swallow in hot flames with such splendor of ivory, iron, and wood. Suddenly the sounds changed. The Danes started in new terror. Cowering in their beds as the terrible screams of the Almighty Enemy sang in the dark. The horrible shrieks of pain and defeat, the tear torn from Grindel's taut throat, hell's captives caught in the arms of him who of all men is the strongest on earth. That mighty protector of men, meant to hold the monster until his life leaped out, knowing that the fiend was no use to anyone in Denmark. All of Babel's bands jumped from the bed, ancestral swords raised and ready, determined to protect the prince as they could. They heard the rain that always did. They could hack the window from every side, trying to open a path for a evil soul, but their points could not hurt them. The sharpest and hardest iron could not scratch their skin, for that sin stained demon had bewitched all men's weapons, slaves, spells, and blunted every mortal to play. And yet, his time had come, his days were over, his death near. Down the hall he would go, swept, groaning and helpless, to the white waiting hands of his worst enemy. Now he discovered, once the afflictor of men, tormentor of their days, what it meant to feud with Almighty God. Grendel saw his strength was deserting him, his claws bound fast. He glanced a brave follower tearing at his hand. The monster's hatred rose higher, but his power had gone. He twisted in pain, and the bleeding sinew deep in the shoulder snapped. Muscle and bone split and broke. The battle was over. Baal had been granted new glory. Grindel escaped, but wounded as he was, could flee to his den. His miserable hole at the bottom of the marsh, only to die, to wait for the end of day. He who had come to them from across the sea, bold and strong minded, had driven affliction on. Purged hair clean, he was happy now, with a fierce work. The Danes had been served as he boasted, he'd served them. Beowulf, a prince of geeks, had killed Grendel, ended the grief, the sorrow, the suffering forced on Hrothgar's helpless people by a bloodthirsty fiend. No Dane doubted the victory, for the fruit hanging high from the rafters where Beowulf had hung it was the monster's arm, claw, and shoulder, and all.